Hey, I'm Roland with Mobile Geeks, and we're right here at NVIDIA, actually, and what we have right here is the new Shield tablet. So that is an add-on device that is um, adding to the Shield family of gaming devices, Android-based gaming devices from NVIDIA. It is an 8-inch tablet based on the new NVIDIA Tegra K1 that's a quad-core running at 2.2 gigahertz in this case, and it has a 192-core NVIDIA Kepler GPU integrated, so that's basically console or um, PC level graphics in this small tablet. So I'm just going to get it, quickly get it out of its box, and they have controller plus an add-on sleeve, which I'm also going to show you. And let's get started. So it comes in this pretty slick looking box. It's retailing for 299 US dollars and 299 euros. That's what we're guessing at least. In the 16 gigabyte version, that there's also going to be an LTE version that is able uh, to actually use 4G wireless. That's going to retail for 399 US dollars or euro in this case. And it also not only gets you LTE, but also um, 32 gigs of flash storage in the tablet. Let's put the tablet to the side first for a second and quickly dive, dive deeper down. So here we have the power adapter that is a 2.1 amp power adapter from NVIDIA right here that plugs into a bunch of different adapters. And these adapters are underneath here. So this is basically the tablet safety information. There's probably also going to be a quick start guide included in the final retail packaging later on. And this is the UK adapter, so that just plugs in here and then you can use it. Um, there's uh, an EU adapter in this retail box for Europe as well, so they're selling them with both adapters. In this case, it's missing right now because they're using it on another device, I guess. And what you also get is this standard micro USB 2.0 cable. I don't think there's anything else in the box. No, not really. All right. So let's talk about the tablet itself. So here we have it. Let me just quickly turn it on. So this thing is actually running Android 4.4.3 KitKat in this case. We're going to quickly move into the settings menu if I manage to find it. It's right there. Go to About Tablet. And there you have it. It's 4.4.2, but when it starts selling in retail, at least that's what NVIDIA is saying, they're going to switch to 4.4.3 KitKat again, and they're also guaranteeing the upgrade to Android 5.0 or Android L, the L release, from Google as soon as they have the code available, so that's definitely going to be upgraded to the newer version. Um, let's talk about the tablet itself. So we have an 8-inch panel in here. That's an IPS panel, so as you can see, the viewing angles are pretty decent. No colors are washing out or going off when turning the device to the sides or, or looking at the device from the sides. You have a resolution of 1920 by 1200 pixels in here, so it's not even more than, actually it's a bit more than 1080p because you have a higher vertical resolution on this device. The colors look pretty nice. The brightness seems to be all right. My guess would be that this is about 350 nits, maybe, maybe a bit more. It's probably not going to be 400 because I guess that would be a bit too much. The whole thing weighs in at 390 grams in this case. It is 9.3 millimeters thick, and it has a 19.7 watt hour battery integrated. Again, two gigs of RAM, 16 or 32 gigs of onboard flash storage, and that 2.2 gigahertz Tegra K1. What they also do is put speakers on the front, so you have stereo speakers on the front, and they're promising that there's even some bass to the sound right here. On the front, you have a two, no, that's a five megapixel camera on this side, which isn't so well placed because this thing is actually supposed to be able, for the first time on Android, to be able to do Twitch streaming, which means you can use the camera to record yourself, and the on-screen content will be combined with that and broadcast to the internet. But when you're holding the device and are streaming, you might cover up the, the camera, so they should have moved that up a bit further. Uh, there's also a reason for this bit of space that is on the left and on the right of the screen itself, because the device uh, is a gaming tablet, or they're positioning it as a gaming tablet, so that's why they left a bit of room for you to actually be able to grab it like this. 
Let's take a quick tour around. So up here we have the power button. That is the volume rocker right there. That's where your micro SD card goes, up to 128 gigabytes right now. And this is the SIM card slot for the LTE model. And again, they're integrating their own pa passive stylus. So you can just pull this out. It's included in all versions of the tablet and it's basically uh, a further developed version of their direct stylus technology. So that's direct stylus 2.0 which is graphics accelerated so you can actually paint with graphics acceleration and stuff but it's still a passive stylus and it still has this kind of um, cutoff tip on the f on the uh, front right there or in the on the top of the stylus on the back you get another five megapixel camera right here which should be able to deliver pretty good photos but you don't get a flash or anything but it still does have an autofocus on the side we have the headset jack plus a mini HDMI out and a micro USB port plus one of the speaker outlets. So you can plug this into your TV and have the device switch to TV mode that adapts to the camera, uh, to the uh, TV and play all your games on the TV. What's interesting about those speaker holes on the side that I just showed you is basically they have outlets on the front and also on the side, so you always get decent sound no matter how you hold the tablet. So if you cover those up, the holes up on the side, you will still get decent sound from the front. Um, what's pretty interesting about this device is actually have integrated PC streaming, so you have to have a, I think that's an NVIDIA GeForce GT uh, 650 and 660M on mobile devices to be able to use streaming. When you're doing that uh, with a wired connection through the HDMI or through the um, micro USB port right there, you'll be able to use full HD streaming capabilities. So you'll be able to play all your PC games on the tablet and in this way, use it kind of like one of those uh, streaming boxes from other companies where you'll be able to stream the media that's coming from your TV or from your PC, for example, any PC game pretty much, or about 200 uh, PC games will be able to be streamed through this tablet to your TV in the living room if you wire it up that way. If you're using a wireless connection, uh, the resolution goes down to 720p to keep the latency down and offer your, you a decent experience. Uh, we haven't been able to really do any benchmarks on this device yet, but we'll show you that probably in a later video. I don't think there is anything on here and right now we're not even allowed to install anything but what I can show you is this game called Treen or Trine 2 or Trini 2 whatever that is basically a PC port so what they've done is they have uh, brought this game it's an OpenGL based game to the K1 and they're offering about um, what, what we're saying um, PlayStation 3 level graphics on the tablet right here Let's just try and see if it loads and check it out for a second so you can take a look at the graphics of the device. And there you go. That's another example. This game will only be available on the Shield tablet. And it's going to be included in the box. So you basically get about $20, uh, $20 of value with the device. And what I'm going to do right now is basically I'm just going to uh, quickly put on this cover right here that snaps onto the device with magnets just like that and then I should be able to prop it up also like that and what I'm now going to show you is the new shield tablet controller that is connecting through a special wide eye stack to the tablet itself so that's basically using wireless or Wi-Fi in this case so no Bluetooth that's uh, the reason they're using that is because they want to reduce latency and keep it snappy and stuff it's a pretty interesting controller because they've adapted the standard or they've orientated themselves with the, or on the standard uh, console controllers so you get those directional analog sticks right here d-pad up here console buttons but they've also integrated a bunch of interesting features and these are for example you get a trackpad down here so that's just a small cursor that shows up in the Android interface if you want to hit some buttons that are more special or harder to hit with your fingers and you can also use that while uh, connecting the device to the TV which makes it a lot easier easier to use when connected to, to the TV 
On the bottom of the trackpad, you actually get a volume marker, so you can change the volume when connecting the device to the TV, and the whole trackpad is actually clickable. There's a NVIDIA Shield button up here that pulls up the Tegra Zone interface or their special TV interface they've integrated, and there's also capacitive touch buttons on this upper part right here, so you have a home button, a back button, and a start button or a play button. There's a mic up here, so you can actually use Google's voice assistance or uh, Google search and all the other voice services that Google offers. The buttons up there, typical console buttons. You also get the shoulder buttons and the trigger buttons on the, on the sides there. There's a port for a headset, so you can definitely do in-game audio, so you can talk to your friends or comment on Twitch or whatever. Basically, talk to anybody through the headset that you might want to put on. You can also do that with the tiny mic up there. There's a micro USB port for charging the internal uh, battery that is fully integrated right here and should give you about 40 hours of gaming. So that's the new controller for the NVIDIA Tegra tablet or Tegra Shield tablet. No, just NVIDIA Shield tablet based on the K1. And I'm just going to quickly try and connect this to the tablet itself and try and play a game right here. So right now I'm started up trying to or Trini 2 and it's right now telling me how to move my character in the game, which obviously doesn't seem to work. Oh yes it does. There you go. So I'm using the controller that's coming with the device to actually control the game and it should be giving me pretty decent graphics. So that's just been a quick demo of the controller that will be sold separately for 60 euros or 60 dollars. I don't know if about, about the euro price but it's definitely going to be 59 US dollars. So I was rolling with Mobile Geeks checking out the Nvidia Shield tablet based on the new Nvidia Tegra K1 quad core SoC that should be available as of July in the US for $300. If you like our videos, subscribe to the channel, give us a like, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus, and visit our website, Google, uh, mobilegeeks.com and mobilegeeks.de. See ya.